Drew Peterson is suing a bank for freezing his home equity loan. Peterson is accusing J.P. Morgan Chase of illegally cutting off his home equity credit line of $220,000. The bank froze Peterson's loan shortly after he was arrested and charged with murdering his third wife, Kathleen Savio. But Peterson says he needs the money from the loan to pay for his defense. J.P. Morgan Chase says its decision was based on the likelihood that Peterson wouldn't be able to pay his loan from jail. Drew Peterson is also a suspect in the disappearance of his fourth wife, Stacy, who vanished two years ago today. We're joined now on set by Peterson's attorneys, Joel Brodsky and Walter Maxim. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. Our pleasure. The average person might not know what happens when someone is awaiting charges. Does your credit line freeze if you have credit cards? If you have a bank loan, are they entitled to say, well, if you go to prison, you might not be able to pay? What is legally... Well, actually, there's a federal law that was enacted exactly to prevent this kind of arbitrary decision. Um, the Truth in Lending Act says basically that there's two basic reasons that they can freeze your credit. One is if your value of your property drops and they can establish that the valuation has gone down as it has with some properties. That's not the case here. The only case is whether or not he is financially capable. In other words, has there been a substantial change in his financial circumstances? And um, they, did not, they said that there was, based on one word, imprisonment, but he has a vested pension and is actually making 130 percent more with his Social Security benefits than he was making when he actually was approved for the loan. So he was an approved, qualified customer, remains a qualified customer, and then just arbitrarily they decided to do this. And, uh, but if he did go to prison, would his pension be frozen? Oh, yeah. No. Absolutely not. His no. pension will, well, as, even uh, if he was uh, convicted of the crimes he's been charged with, they're not related to his employment as a police officer. So even a conviction wouldn't stop his pension. Uh, and the Social Security is, is related uh, to the children, so even Social Security wouldn't stop. There is absolutely no reason for Chase to have cut off his line of credit. But Chase uh, has refused comment from what we've seen so far this morning, so we don't know what their side of the story is. However, let's just say that they were to win this argument. Would, would you drop him? No, I, I'm as with a client. Absolutely not. I'm, I'm with Drew to, uh, to the conclusion of this matter, whatever that is. What happens if he does, if this lawsuit doesn't reach a resolution? Do the taxpayers pay for Drew's defense? Well, that's the interesting thing, because the, um, the way we've got it right now is the taxpayers, you, I, everybody in Illinois, is paying for the prosecution. And it's an enormous uh, expense for all these experts and this investigation and so on. And basically, when the government prosecutes you, they just put it on the tab. There's no real limit. They can do almost anything they want. Um, and the resources are endless. The little individual, when he faces the might of the government, has to use his own resources. And if he exhausts those, then he can have a public defender. He has to show his qualifications that he's, in effect, in effect destitute. In this situation, Mr. Peterson wants to use his own money to pay for his defense. And uh, one reason I took this case is because if you think about it, the little individual being in this situation, um, if he or anyone doesn't pay, has their, their assets frozen arbitrarily like this, then what happens is the taxpayer not only pays the prosecution, they pay for the defense. So you, if, if you, whether, whichever your viewpoint is on Mr. Peterson, and a lot of people have, you know, some very critical things that they, they've thought about him or some people have prejudged him. But the fact is, uh, whatever your point of view, you're going to wind up paying for the defense. And that's everybody in, out, in, out in, uh, in the public who, who pays taxes. Yeah, and why it might not necessarily be attorney's fees. We certainly, if, if this keeps up this way, we may have to ask for assistance regarding expert witnesses that we'll need, uh, pathologists, uh, doctors, you know, uh, experts on divorce law, uh, stuff like that. What, what is the, the status of the case, Joel, and, and how is... Uh, and what is Peterson doing in jail? Well, tomorrow, uh, we're up on a status date tomorrow where we're going to pick tr uh, basically a, a trial date uh, sometime next year and also a date for a hearing on the motion regarding whether or not this hearsay evidence is going to be admitted under the hearsay law that the judge said was constitutional uh, last month. Uh, I've talked to Drew, you know, maybe every other day in jail. He's, you know, he's doing okay. Uh, he's, he's bearing up well. He's, uh, and he gets his visits and he talks to his children and his family on the phone all the time. And... Uh, He's doing about as well as one could be. Obviously, jail is not a pleasant place to be, and, uh, and, and nobody's saying he's enjoying it, but uh, he's bearing up well. We happen to be talking to you today on the two-year anniversary of the disappearance of yes. Stacy Peterson, Drew's fourth wife. He's not facing any charges in her disappearance, but does he have any contact with her family at all, or do you have any idea if there's been anything done in the 
search to locate her? Is Drew still involved in that? Well, one thing I want to, I can say about the, 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 both the Stacey Peterson investigation and, and Kathy Savio is this. You know, I've been had the opportunity now to go through, you know, probably over 80,000 pages and transcripts and evidence, and my, my team, you know, the people we have helping us have gone through it. And believe me, 90% of what you hear in the media uh, is, is, in, is just has no basis. I ask people to wait, because what I've discovered by going through that stuff is what's going to come out in court is going to bear, bear very little resemblance to what you've been hearing uh, over, over the media. And I think that people can reserve judgment and wait till they hear the facts that come out in court. They're going to be very surprised. All right, Joe Brodsky, Walter Maxson, we thank you for joining us this morning. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for Thank you. Hello, Jim Ramsey. Well, good morning to you. We